Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Kenneth Hill, 31-88-76. All right, Mr. Hill, I'm Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Cheryl Renatz and Mr. Attorney Marabella. will be your parole panel. I'll ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. We have uh, Mr. Norris Henderson to speak at the appropriate time. Carrie Myers will speak at the appropriate time. And Mr. Randy Myers will speak. Kenneth Hill, DOC number 318876. You're a first class offender. For all eligibility date 8 1 2021. Good time 12 30 2038. Full term 6 25 2089. You were uh, at a commutation of sentence to 99 years by the governor. You're charged with second degree murder. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right. Would you answer Mr. Marabella's questions, please? Good morning, Mr. Hill. My name is Tony Marabella. Can you hear Good me morning. okay? Can you yeah, hear me all right? You. I can hear you. Mr. Hill, how old are you, sir? 51 years old now. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? 33 years. Tell me a little bit about your educational background. How far did you go in school before you came to prison? Oh. Uh, I was I was I was in school all the time I came to jail. I have my my last high school or report card of the six of two of two thousand and nineteen ninety. Okay, I've been in school since I've been. Now you were eighteen at the time this happened. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you were still in high school. What grade were was, you in? I was in the uh, ninth grade special ed department. And uh, you've been trying to get your GED. I noticed in your record at the time our record was prepared, you were enrolled in the GED program. Have you completed yep. that? Program? No, sir. No, sir. I just would, I just tested uh, last week on a tent and okay. still didn't get it. Been trying how, long, how long have you been trying to get your GED? Since the STEP program since 1995. Okay. And uh, it's been difficult for you? Yeah, it's, it's difficult trying to uh, remember the, the formulas and stuff. I can read and write. It's just trying to remember the, the pronouns and the actions and different things. But I actually just taped on a tent. Okay. Uh, now, when you were 18, still in the ninth grade, were you living at home with your parents? Who were you living with at the time? I was living with my mother, Dolores Hill. Yeah. And uh, you had a little bit, you had some run-ins as a juvenile. You had battery charge, a burglary charge, possession of stolen things. You'd gotten into a little bit of trouble, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's talk about what happened on June the 26th of 1990. Uh, you, did you know Mr. Johnny Gilmore? No, sir. I was, I'm from out of Algiers area, and my crime happened in Jefferson Paris. Okay. Tell me a little bit about, as best you remember, what happened. Uh, I understand, I've read the reports, but I want you to tell me, as best you can recall, what happened that day. Uh, first, I take full responsibility. On June 27, 1990, me and a group of friends met a, a female, and we was walking, but a female told me when she stayed at a home apartment at all, in Pebble Walks, and we was walking, over by the female house, I stopped on West Chelsea Street. Uh, one of my band members asked me where I was, where I was back there. So I was going to meet this girl. And the process suggested me meeting this young lady. Never got to meet her. Uh, individual Paul Jackson came up on me, asked me all the type of questions, like where I'm from. I said, I'm out of the Fisher House of the Project. And one thing led to another. Uh, he flashed a, uh, a gun, which I perceive now to be a toy gun. I allowed my ego to get into my feelings. I learned the trigger of my ego. And I left bad, angry, and I went and got a gun and I came right back with like within 20 minutes. Just Let's to stop you for a second. You said you were not in your local area, you were in Jefferson Parish. Yes, Where sir. did you go to get a gun and come right back? I went right back to the apartment, all my apartments, which is like 10 Who's minutes from where I was at. Whose apartment? Uh, of some individual, the guy that, oh, I don't know his name. I just asked him and he just gave me the gun. All right, so it was about 10 minutes from Wayward. So you come back and what happened? 
when I come back, when I come back, as I'm walking up the street, I see people moving. When I pull up, I had a gun in my way, never flashed a gun, and I asked him what's up. And when I heard a gunshot, which I perceived to be a gunshot, kind of found out was the woman slammed the door and the girl went inside. I just took the gun and I just started shooting and running and shooting and running. And the next day, I watched the 12 o'clock news and I realized that my life had, was taken and I turned myself in. And, and I, police reports suggest you fired about four or five shots. Does that sound yeah, about right? Yeah, one one bullet went in the back, back of the victim head from the from a uh, possibly hit the concrete or something that stayed over the fence. Uh, two bullets went in uh, a car. Two bullets went in a car and two bullets went in a, a second floor apartment. That's why I was charged with uh, aggravated criminal damage. And that's that's based on five bullets. Let, let's talk a little bit about who you are now. And uh, were you drinking? Well, let's go back to that day. Were you drinking that day? No, I had just got out of school and I was by my AC house, a typical summer, showing off in the pool, meeting girls, not from that area. And one bad decision to another bad decision. Were, were you smoking weed or taking no, any kind of drugs? No, not that day. That, no, no, I was not drinking. Drinking or smoking weed that day. Did you do drugs back then? Yes, I did. I did do drugs. And I drank occasionally, but I did do a lot of drugs. Playing football. Kind of did you do? I was oh. smoking. I was smoking crack. I was smoking primos. How old were you when you first started smoking crack? Um, I come home and eat. Uh, sixteen years old, seventeen years old. How often were you smoking crack? Uh, once I got addicted, I was smoking it every day. I mean, I became addicted to it. And you tell me you weren't smoking that day, and you just gotten out of school. Is the reason yeah. you weren't smoking is you just gotten out of um, school? Yeah, it was like when I got with my auntie house, my auntie was like a middle class, so I just was staying by her in the whole apartment. And okay. well, let me tell you what I'm like trying said, to find out. I'm trying to find out how often you were smoking crack cocaine. Did you smoke crack cocaine the day before this happened? No, sir. No, sir. When was the last time you smoked crack cocaine before this occurred? Uh about 20 days before that. 20 days before about, about 20 days before that. Let's talk about what you've done while you've been in prison. You've taken uh, several programs. Uh, you've taken Faking for a Change, live, excuse me, Living in Balance, Anger Management, Victim Awareness. Uh, tell me about what, what, what are some of the things that you've learned uh, about yourself since you've been in prison? One of the most important things I learned about myself, how to control my anger. I had a, a pride. You know, I, I learned that that submission, submitting my mind, taking a uh, responsibility of my own self, being busy, you know, since I've been in Angola, talking to thousands of kids, trying to uh, be a role model within the system, even out when I was a part of juvenile awareness, even when my high school came up here in 2018. Landry High School came up here. I had a chance to speak to my actual school I went to. And my teacher was there who speak at my last board here in Tyrone Casby. I just been busy since I've been in Angola trying to be a, a model inmate for the population. What have you learned about how your crime has affected Mr. Gilmore's family? Oh, it's been Ms. Ms. Dr. Gilmore or real bad because I found out through the process that Mrs. Gilmore had passed away in 2019. And I learned that over the years that Mrs. Gilmore and her family had forgiven me, but I knew that I took somebody's life. And that's something I had to live with. And I will uh, constantly, when I get out, uh, will talk to kids and express to them by making bad decisions, constantly making bad decisions. And that's one of the things I'm going to do when I go to Hammond is talk to any high school or any program. And I learned that. If you were to get out, how would you be able to convince me or what would you do to make sure that you don't go back to smoking crack cocaine or any other drugs for that matter? 
Well, I've learned that drugs and triggers, you know, uh, don't do it. Drugs and drug, drug and alcohol is the first one of the first uh, triggers to bring you back to prison. Most people, when you get out of prison, when they want to get out, the first thing they just want to drink. Well, I haven't drank since I've been in prison 30, 30 years in Angola. And my thing is, uh, I, even here, I've been a part of the AA program for years, and I would go out there and just uh, continue to not to drink or use, or use alcohol. Or use now, did, alcohol. I hear, did I hear you say you were in an AA program for a number of years? Yes, sir. I, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I, I learned all uh, separate responsibility for my actions dealing with the, the surrender prayer. You know, God grabbing surrender some things I cannot change, a couple of things I can't. It was no different. Now I know it's different. Want to continue when you get out? Yeah, I, I want to talk to AA programs and anybody who want to help. You know, because I, I'm a firm believer that. Uh, we the boys in Angola, you know, I need to get out and, and, and share my story as well as I've been doing with the uh, business room project, trying to save somebody else's child and parent from going through the struggle that my mother and Miss Dr. Gilmore family went through. What kind of job have you had while you've been in prison? What kind of work do you do? For the last 15 years, I've been doing landscaping, beautification in Angola up front by the administration building from the front gate all the way around the uh, administration building for the last 15 years. So that's what I plan on doing, going to get a job in landscaping. Now, it's my understanding that if you're paroled, you're going to go uh, to the Louisiana Parole Project. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once, once you go through that program and they help you out, where will you ultimately live? Where do you want to ultimately live? I'm going to live in Hammond. With my cousin Nathaniel here, who spoke about last year, him and his wife Colleen. I don't want to go back to New Orleans. I'm gonna go live in Hammond, just try something new, and and uh, see what God has for me out there, Hammond. What kind of work are you hoping to do? Well, I'm I'm hoping that uh, I can get on with the city, doing landscape or uh, the uh, university, get doing landscaping. That's something I'm real good at. Uh, there's some things that I want to tell you that you can't do anything about. Uh, some law enforcement people are opposed to your parole. Some are not. All right. uh, some of the victim's family is opposed uh, to your release. Uh, you've got a, a low risk. You're a minimum security. Uh, do you think you'll ever be able to, to, to get that GED? It sounds like you've been working pretty hard and in, in, in been really trying to get it, and it's been real difficult. I've been trying. Lord, no, I've been trying. Just my mind just cannot get it. I've been trying that since high school. Since 86, I've been trying to get a GED. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Uh, Warden Ambo, what can you tell us about Mr. Hill? Yes, sir, Chairman. I can tell you that Mr. Hill does work groundskeeping. He works over there by the warden's wing. Uh, he keeps uh, the landscape over there very pretty, very beautiful. Uh, he's very respectable. Anytime we walk in the, uh, the building, he's always there speaking and greeting everybody. Um, he have difficult trying to pass the tape test. He just got to the uh, M level. Uh, he's been unable to obtain his GD ever since he's been here. So he has been he has been trying. He just he just progressed to the M uh M level. Um he has a total of 42 DB reports, his last one being 1026 of 2014. Uh he has taken T4C substance abuse anger management. Like you say, his uh his tiger assessment is low. Um I think Mr. Kennedy here is ready to uh re enter society and become a, a law abiding citizen now. Thank you. I uh, want to appreciate your comments. We'll have a brief uh, comment from Mr. Norris Henderson. Good morning. Uh, thank y'all. Uh, you know, I've been with Kenneth for, I remember when he first showed up, you know, as a little kid. And the thing most striking about his story was the fact that maybe a year before he came to prison, he was on one of those tours. And he was a little kid that didn't pay attention to nothing that we were saying to him. And then when he showed up in the prison, he became that testament. 
about what happens when you show up and don't pay attention. And he has kind of like dedicated his life to doing that. He's been a part of juvenile awareness since its inception uh, to tell his story, to give kids this broader picture about never say it ain't going to be you because I'm the proof in the pudding that it can happen uh, and how it happens to you. Uh, his skill set, I remember at his, at his party board hearing uh, when we was talking about his inability to get his GED, he had mentioned something to Mr. Roche that he was slow. And Mr. Roche cautioned him about, you're not slow, you're just deliberate. And so even with that, his skill set, when he say he wants to do landscaping work, he has several licensing and horticulture, uh, dealing with chemicals, the whole nine yards. So there's a lot of opportunity, uh, especially in Hammond, since Hammond is kind of like growing and developing, uh, to be able to do landscaping work uh, because he have the tools. He actually have the skills and he's very good at it uh, as a testament to all the plants and stuff around my house that uh, the horticulture used to sell at the rodeo. But I'm here to support Kenny. You know, it was like I, when I was visiting my brother, I would visit Kenny and uh, told him one of the last things, man, that uh, I would promise to him that I would be here with him until he get out of prison. Hopefully the day is that day. You know, I don't know. I can't make that uh, guarantee to him, but to let y'all know that in spite of how this turns out, I'm going to always be here uh, to support Kenny. Me and my wife, uh, my wife love him and, uh, you know, looking forward to him coming to help uh, kind of like finish this job he started with all these plants around my house, you know? Because I hate God, I'll be honest with you, I hate God, you know? So I just uh, pray that uh, today is a good day uh, for Kenny. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. All right, we'll have a brief statement from Mr. Kerry Myers. Yes, good morning, Kerry Myers, Louisiana Parole Project. I'm not gonna repeat everything everyone else has said. Warren Ambo and, and Mr. Henderson certainly uh, extolled uh, Mr. Hill's uh, readiness to be released. I uh, can tell you Parole Project is gonna be here to support him through his transition. Uh, he'll take, we'll, we'll give him the, the, you know, the full complement of our services, uh, our programming, our mentorship. Uh, I, you know, I've known Mr. Hill for a very long time uh, myself, and uh, I, I truly believe that he, he is not the 18-year-old uh, kid who came to prison. And, and you can see it just by uh, his, his interview here today. So certainly ask this board to, to consider the fact that his sentence has been commuted and he's here today in front of you. And, and we would certainly just ask this board to give him his, his, uh, rec his uh, release today. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Mr. Randy Meyer. Good morning, Randy Meyer, Assistant DA Jefferson Pack. Um, we're opposed at this time to Mr. Hill's request. The biggest reason is he was sentenced as a you know, crime of second degree murder to life without parole. That was commuted to 99 years of parole eligibility after 33 years. According to the record um, that I was looking at, he's only served 30 years. So uh, based on that commutation, he would not be eligible. I think he's eligible under the uh, Old Thomas Act. But because he was the commutation was 99 years of parole after 33, we we're opposed at this time. Also think, um, you know, there's some limited, uh, some of the, Victims are opposed, but also I'd, I'd like to see some additional programming. Um, I think you know, in the last couple of years, he hasn't uh, done a whole lot there. He had the 100 hours thinking for a change in 2019 and then living in balance in 21. So um, for those reasons, as of today, we would be opposed to his request. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Hill, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. First and foremost, I want to thank God, thank uh, the governor for giving me the second chance at life. And to the Gilmore family, I want to apologize to them for taking Johnny Gilmore from them. I'm not that state. I'm not that state 18 year old kid. I try everything, about, everything I can do in Angola to make a difference. And keep make the family of going through what Mr. Gilmore went through 
And I said, Johnny, give me one. And a young age. And I promised this boy, if they get this opportunity, I would use my purse to stop the next kid from making a bad decision. I take full response for my decision. I don't take it lightly that the governor's giving me this opportunity to go home to my family. And I just know that I'm a changed man. I'm not the 18 year old kid. I don't make decisions like that to move. I'm changed. As a good person, I, I made a bad decision and I regret it. I support it to show me mercy. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Pound prepare to vote. Mr. Tony Marabella. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hill, uh, I appreciate uh, your interview today. I think you conducted a very good interview. You were very honest today. Uh, it seems like uh, you are a different person than you were uh, at 18 years old when you came to prison uh, a long time, 33, almost 33 years ago. Uh, you work very hard on your GED. Uh, you haven't been able to get it, but that hasn't stopped you from working hard. And, and I do appreciate that. Uh, it seems like uh, you've got a good plan for your sobriety. Uh, you've been doing AA for a long time. You understand uh, what it requires and, and what it needs to do. Uh, based upon uh, the programs that you've taken, the length of time that you've been in prison, uh, the comments by the warden, uh, your uh, low risk, uh, minimum security, uh, fairly good uh, disciplinary record. Uh, my vote would be to uh, grant your parole with the following conditions. Uh, you report to the uh, Louisiana Parole Project and uh, you work with them and follow whatever recommendations they make to you. Uh, I, I know they're going to work with you to assist you and trying to get your GED. I hope you can get it, uh, but I understand you're working very hard. And if you don't, you don't. Just continue. Uh, also, uh, three AA meetings uh, per week, uh, curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I would like to see you do some community service work, to talk to uh, especially uh, juveniles about, about what happened to you and uh, how you can perhaps prevent them from going down that same track. So that would be my question. All right, Ms. Renata. All right, Mr. Hill. Um, I do concur. My vote today is to grant, uh, based on the conversation we've had today and previously at the pardon hearing, uh, I would like to add a special condition to those stipulated by Mr. Marabella that you have no contact with uh, the family of Johnny Gilmore whatsoever. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. You have two votes to grant your parole. I'm also going to vote to grant your parole um, for the same reasons as stated. You'll go to the Louisiana Parole Project Community Service six hours per month. Uh, NAA three times a week, curfew 9p to 6a, and no contact with the victim's family. You understand stipulation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three votes to grant your parole. Your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you.